Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Elder Perry here, Pastor Perry. My God, whatever title you want to call me, it's fine with me here at Resurrected Hope Ministries. Once again, this is Bible study night, Thursday night Bible study. This is where we sit at the feet of Jesus and we learn of him. We praise God for being here once again, um, safe and sound, clothed in our right mind with the use and the activity of our limbs. We praise God for that. Uh, there's a lot going on in the world uh, where we could not be here or we could be somewhere in a hospital with a respirator, but we praise God for being before you. We praise God for you and the health of you and anyone connected to you. And so tonight we just want to bring the word of God to you uh, from God. Not It's not my word, so don't, don't worry. Don't get upset. Don't fret. This is the word of God. It's what God gave me to give to you. Uh, so before we begin, we're not going to hold you long tonight. Before we begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of your son, Jesus. We are gross, both thankful and grateful for being in the land of the living. We're thankful, Lord God, for being able to come together, Lord God, to hear from you one more time. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to right every wrong, to straighten out anything that's crooked, smooth out anything, my God, that's rough. Lord God, use me tonight as your vessel, my God, as a tool, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, to help your people. I decrease, you increase, all of you and none of me. Anoint me for such a time as this. We pray in Jesus' name, amen and amen again. All right, let's go right into our Bible study. Uh, I'm going to speak tonight, I'm going to teach tonight uh, from 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 uh, through 10 is where we're going to take our text from. Uh, before I give you the subject of uh, the lesson tonight, we just want to preface it a little bit. Like, who who was Peter? Uh, you probably already know, but for those of you that may not know, we'll just give you a quick uh, a little uh, snapshot of who Peter was. He was a fisherman. He was who Jesus called he to be one of his 12 main uh, disciples. And along with James and John, um, Peter was one of the closest companions to, uh, to Jesus. Uh, matter of fact, after the resurrection, Peter became one of the most influential Christian leaders in the first century. He was not only a gifted preacher, but he was a bold leader. Uh, in the gospel, he was portrayed most of the time as impetuous, always speaking his mind, uh, always acting on impulse, uh, but he was still close to Jesus. In the book of Acts, uh, Peter's decisiveness, it transformed him into someone that the early Christians, they constantly relied on him and, and they turned to him uh, for information and for an encouragement. Uh, and Peter he had several names, uh, Simon, Peter, and Peter, and uh, he also had uh, Cephas. Now, Cephas meant uh, rock, and, and we all know that Jesus told uh, Peter, upon this rock, upon you, Peter, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. So Peter uh, was a pretty important fellow uh, in the Bible here in the New Testament church. Very important. Um, and, and, and Jesus recognized his talent and, and gave him uh, the title thereof and gave him the authority thereof. And, you know, he does that to each and every one of us. And we shouldn't be upset when someone has the capacity to be a leader and we don't. That's just some of us are born leaders and some of us are born followers. But it doesn't matter if I'm a leader or if I'm a follower. What matters is we all get to the same place at the same time. And that's heaven. Amen. Amen. So uh, Peter is writing here in uh, second epistle of Peter, uh, chapter one, verses one through ten. He's writing to. Uh, Jewish believers, and and he's writing to us too, <laughs> and he's urging all of us to keep a close watch on our personal lives. Uh, a, a Christian's life, and we all know this, it demands diligence because we have to portray and we have to pursue moral excellence. We we we've, we've got to be uh, like Christ. Amen. 
Uh, Peter is also letting us know that although God is long suffering, okay, uh, uh, my God, and he's long suffering and, 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 and sending judgment, ultimately though, he will send judgment if we don't turn. So in view of that fact, Christians should live lives of godliness. So that brings me to our subject. The subject of our lesson tonight is called Secure Your Position. Secure Your Position. And if you want to add it, add something to it, you can secure your position in God. Huh? Secure your position. So uh, what does the word secure mean? You, you saying, uh, Elder, you say secure my position. What does that really mean? I, I hear it, but break it down. Uh, to secure something, uh, you fortify it. You strengthen it. You reinforce it. You shore it up. Uh, you, you make certain and you guard against, uh, you guard from loss. And so, uh, so secure your position. So fortify your position. Well, what does position mean? Well, position is not only your place or uh, your spot, uh, uh, but it's also your insight, your awareness. It's your understanding. So tonight uh, we want to impress upon you and to help you and to show you how to secure your position to for, to strengthen and reinforce your place and your spot in God. Reinforce your insight and your awareness and your understanding of God. Is that all right? All right. All right. So if it's all right with you, then let's go uh, to the second Peter chapter one, verse one. And it reads as such. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, what's going on here? Well, Simon Peter, he's, he's letting you know this is me speaking. He's a servant. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Peter was a bond servant, which is a term referred to uh, a, a person in a permanent role of service. In other words, he, he gave his life. He said, I'm sold out for Christ. Are you sold out? Are you so you don't have to answer right now. You don't have to send me a text or call me. Just think about that. Are you a bond servant uh, uh, of Christ? Are you uh, uh, in a permanent role of service or are you in a temporary role? When it's all right, you're there. When the crowd is around, I'll step up and be the who uh, I was declared to be. But when there's nobody around, I'm going to do something else. So uh, Peter is saying here, a servant, I'm a bond servant and, a, and an apostle of Jesus Christ. He says, and to those, you know, what he's saying here, to those who have obtained a faith that is as valuable as his faith, faith he said, a faith of equal standing, uh, a servant and apostle to them that have obtained faith precious faith, okay, a faith of equal standing with ours, a faith based on the approval that comes from God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, so Simon Peter here is letting you know who he is and uh, who you are, and if you're with him, that this is how you're with him. You obtain a faith that is just as valuable as his, and equal to standing with his and a faith based on the approval that comes from where God and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, now remember, we're talking about securing your position. Don't lose sight of that. Verse two, uh, Peter is saying, he said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, because of your knowledge of God and his son, Jesus, who is our Lord, he said, grace and peace is exponentially increased because of that relationship. Hear me, hear me. Because he's saying grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, our Lord. 
So he said, so because of your knowledge of God and your knowledge of Jesus, who is our Lord, grace and peace, okay, those two are exponentially increased and multiplied because of that relationship with God and his son, Jesus, who is our Lord. Well, what, what, the, that, that's a powerful point there. What does it mean to say that uh, Jesus Christ is Lord? Well, for Jesus to be Lord of your life means that he's the ruler. That if Jesus is the Lord of your life, he's the boss. He's the, um, he's the master of your entire life. He can't be Lord over just a, a part of your life. He, he's got to have complete control over your life. He, if Jesus is, you're walking around saying Jesus is Lord over my life. He's got, you've, he's got to be in complete control over your life. There's nothing. You have to completely surrender to him. You have to completely, my God, be sold out to him. That's how you secure that's one way that you secure your position. You've got to be sold out. So in order to say that he is Lord and to call him your Lord, he's your boss and he is your master over your entire life. And so may grace and peace be yours in abundance through what? Through full knowledge of God and of Jesus. And in other words, uh, Peter was saying, I'm, I'm praying to, I, I pray that God will be kind to you and will let you live in perfect peace. May you keep learning more and more about God and our Lord Jesus. And that's how you secure your position. That's one way to secure it, that you, you, that, that God is, shows favor towards you and that, uh, you, you live in perfect peace and that you, you keep learning each and every day, every, every Thursday night that you click on to hear what thus saith the Lord. You keep learning more and more about God and your Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he's only Lord in your life if you've fully given your life to him. If you've only given your life in part, he's not Lord of your life. If, you, if you've only given him uh, uh, on Sunday and, and, and that's it, he, he's not Lord in your life. God is saying, I'm a jealous God. I need more time from you. I, I just can't do uh, two hours on a Sunday. It won't work. My God, I, I, if I'm going to be Lord over your life, I've got to be Lord in everything. I can't be partial. I've got to be a full-time God to you. And if I'm a full-time God to me and you are a full-time son or daughter to me, my God, then I've got full-time benefits. My God, I, and my God, if, he, if I'm giving you full-time benefits, you don't have to worry about anything going wrong. You don't have to worry if you get sick. I'm there. You don't have to worry, my God, if, if your situation or your circumstance turns sour. And my God, you don't have to worry about it. My God, if you've given God uh, your entire life, if he's truly Lord, my God, over your life. That's how, that's one of the ways that you secure your position. You, you can't give that up, that position. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but that position that God has given you is precious. It's not something to play with. It's not, it, it's, it's like, it's like fine China. You wouldn't play with fine China, throw it up in the air and, and play catch with it because, uh, my God, it might even shatter in your hand. So, uh, you, you shine it and you take care of it and you put it on the shelf and you, uh, probably enclose it in something so where it will be safe. And that's what God is looking for out of you and I. Amen. All right. Amen. So Peter goes on to say in verse three, we hope already that we've said something to encourage you. That's what we're here for. We, I, I asked the Lord, Lord, give me uh, um, an encouraging word for your people because of the day and the time and the seasons that we're living. We, we need to be encouraged. We need to hear something that will, will cause us uh, excitement we, and that will cause us a calmness that will help us through the night. And, and there's plenty of night. There's plenty of night here. But uh, God is the light of our life. And so Peter is saying, uh, verse three, according as his divine power hath given unto us all things 
that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue. Well, what is he talking about here? He said, Peter says, according as his divine power. Well, what is the divine power of God? The divine power of God, listen, is the supernatural power of God. I, I want you to know that this God that we serve is a supernatural God, a metaphysical God. It, uh, my God, we can't certain, there's no under, you can't understand this God. You can't fathom this God. This God is divine. He operates from the realm of divinity. Uh, that is why we must be God's children so we can use his divine power to save in the midst of any sort of situation, any daring situation. The divine power of God also moves down, my God, to the New Testament when the Bible talked uh, my God, about Jesus. Jesus Christ was God's divine power personified. Let me say that again. Jesus Christ was God's divine power personified. Super, Jesus did supernatural things. He opened up blind eyes, deaf ears. He raised the dead and those that were sick. He healed those that had leprosy unbelievable supernatural things uh, that Jesus did through his father, my God. And so this his the divine power of God is the supernatural power of God. And in order to secure your position, you have got to tap in to the divine power of God. You've got to tap into this supernatural power of God. You've got to believe, my God, that you can move, that you have faith, the grain of a mustard seed that can move a mountain. Tell this mountain, you go over here and you go over there. Tell cancer back up. My God, tell high blood pressure come down. My God, in the name of Jesus, tell any type, my God, of a disease or anything going mental dementia, straighten up. Go to the root cause and be healed in the name of Jesus. Divine power, supernatural power of God. But Jesus Christ was God's divine power personified. Jesus just demonstrated God's supernatural power throughout his entire reign. He did unfed the 5,000. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Supernatural power. In other words, this scripture is saying, uh, uh, chapter three is saying, in other words, we have everything we need to live a life that pleases God. God has given us everything. This is how you secure your position. It was all given to us by God's own power. When we learn he had invited us to share in his wonderful goodness. So when you heard, first heard about this great God and your heart was pricked and you repented and you went down in uh, water and the name of Jesus was called over you and you came up speaking in other tongues as the spirit of God uh, give utterance. We uh, now God began to give us everything to live a life, uh, give us everything that we need to please him. And, and, and it was all given to us by God, uh, his own power, so that when we learned, uh, he had invited us, he said, come on in and sup with me and I will sup with you and share in my goodness, share in my glory. So people of God, uh, this verse is saying to us, uh, according as his divine power has given unto us all things. Uh, he didn't short us. You know how uh, in this world there are so many things that are going on that everybody's getting short chains. I'm even looking, my God, at, at seniors. Uh, you live your life, you work all your life and you work hard and you save a few dollars. And then at the end and when you're retired, now they want to take your retirement. And my God, and then they force you to take their insurance and then they begin to charge you all kinds of money when you got to go to a doctor and you must go to a specialist and that in the the fees go the sky high so i mean we're living in, in a, a a day and a time that we're not getting what we should be getting my god from man they don't take they're not taking care of us like they should be taking care of us but Peter is saying, according to as his divine power, supernatural power, has given unto us 
all things. So I don't have to worry, my God, because the government and man is not taking care of me like they promised and like they say they were going to do. I don't have to because uh, Peter is saying that God has given, uh, he's, he's supernatural and he's given us uh, unto us all things that pertain unto life. Okay, that means living right here, down here on earth, and godliness and living for him. Don't fret. Secure your position. Don't fret. Yeah, I'm all, they, they're threatening they're going to take the social security and the jobs and this and that and unemployment is sky high. And oh my God, oh my God, it's not going to work. We're just all going to die and that's it. No, according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and to virtue. People of God, we need to stay close to this God. We need to secure our position every single day. When you get up in the morning, make sure you pray. When you get up in the morning, my God, make sure you secure your position. When you get up in the morning, Lord, forgive me if I've done anything, my God, to if I've sinned, if I've uh, my God offended you. If I, even if my thoughts were wrong, my intentions, my God, in the name of Jesus, you, you just want the Lord. I, I, I want to be. I want to secure my position. I don't want to see your face and and you say depart from me because I didn't secure my position. So while I have the time and and you've given me all things pertaining to life and to godliness, there's no way that I can lose. There's no way. And, and if the situation gets uh, uncanny, if the situation gets strained and the situation gets that I can't handle it anymore, I just call on the supernatural God and your divine power will take care of it. Amen. My God, let me hear you say amen. Yes, he'll do it. He'll do it. He will do it. All you have to do is believe it. Peter goes on to say in verse four. And I'm talking about securing your position along with Peter. He says, whereby are given unto us exceedingly, exceeding great and precious promises. Great. Listen to the verbiage that he used. Exceeding great, precious promises. Huh? That's everything. That's big. Boom. Supernatural. God. I dare you to challenge it. I dare you to try to fathom it. I dare you to try to turn it or uh, tear it down. Now, don't now note, though, uh, as a sidebar, just uh, digressing a little bit, everything that God does for you, every blessing, every bit of favor, and when he does things and you, your day is wonderful and he manifests himself, here comes Satan. Satan is always coming behind the blessings of God and the manifestation of God to try to overthrow and overtake you, okay, and try to beat down what God has done, to try to make you think that God, uh, he's not, he, he can't, he's not one that can keep his word. He's a whisperer. Satan is always on his job to try to turn around something that God has already set for you that God has already turned. See, he'll try to, God has already turned the situation around for you. And here comes Satan again to try to reverse it. Okay. And turn it the other way. Okay. But you and I, we have to remember that, uh, uh we are, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. If God said it, he's going to do it. If he said, he's going to bring you out, stay there. He's going to bring you out. If it, that's how you secure your position, if you jump out and and go, oh, my God, it's not going to work and and put your own mind in it and start running behind man, trying to get an, an answer from somebody who is not godly. OK, you're going to lose out. Your position will be in ze jeopardy. But what you want to do is secure your position. So you hear Peter say, whereby are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. There's that word again, divine, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We know what the lust, lust of the eye, pride of life, lust of the flesh. 
So in other words, what is Peter saying here in verse four? He's saying that God made great and precious and marvelous promises. So his nature will become part of us. Now, now what is that? What kind of God are we serving? He made great and precious promises. So his nature will become a part of us that by these, by the great and precious promise, exceeding great and precious promises, that, the, by, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. In other words, God made great and marvelous promises, so his nature would become part of us, that he lives in us. He wants to sup with you. He wants to sup with me. He wants to talk. Come, let's reason together. He wants to talk. You're my child. I made you in my image. Then we could escape our evil desires and the corrupt influences of this world. In other words, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, we could escape all of our evil desires and the corrupt influences of this world. How? If we become one with Christ, ah, let me, let me say that again. You want to escape what's going on in the world. You want to escape those desires that, that plague you. And that when you get home by yourself and with yourself, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be this way. Paul said, there's a war going on and in my body. And when, when I, when I want to do good, I find myself not doing good. I find myself doing the very thing that I hate. Uh, we've all, we, we're there, we're, we're human, we're there, but God made great and marvelous promises so his very nature will become a part of us. We will be one with Christ. He set us up, my God, for that. Then we could escape, my God, the evilness and the corruptness, my God, of this world. That is how you secure your position. You've got to be one with God. There is no other way. There is no other God. There is no other system, my God. There is no other book. There is no other uh, uh, theory. There, there isn't. There is no other theological thought. Be, there, there, there's only one thought, <clears throat> excuse me, becoming part of God, him living in our lives. <clears throat> excuse me. Don't you want that? Wouldn't you want to be a part of God and God be a part of you? He loves us so, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? For you and I, because he loved us so, even in our sin, even in our filth, even when Adam messed up, he's like, I, I still, I, I love you. I made you, you're my children. Do you, get a, do you disown your kids just because they messed up? No, you, you, you haven't. And sometimes you may even say, I don't want to have nothing else to do with you. But let something serious happen. You're going to be the first one in the car, first one up at the doctors, at the hospital, at the police station. Okay? And that's how God is about us. That's how he is about us. He wants us to be one with him so that he can bless us, so that he can help us. Okay? So that he can be our all in all. He said, I'm jealous. I want to be everything to you. Don't build an altar. Don't build a, 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 a golden calf. You know, he said, don't, don't build an idol. Call on me. I'm here for you. And, not a, and I'm here for you 24-7. And I'm just not an object. I'm a spirit. I can move. I'm supernatural. I, I, I am that I am. What more do you want? You just say, Lord, I, I, I need you to be my comforter tonight because I can't sleep. He says, all right, I am your comforter tonight. That's Sunday Abasa. Huh? That's what Peter is saying. Exceeding great and precious promises. He loves you. He loves me. He loves you in your filth. I don't care where you are right now in your life. Okay down in the gutter, but on, on top of the roof. I don't care where you are. You need God. And God is standing right now with his arms outstretched. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. You can't rest. God said, come to me. 
You're tired? God said, come to me. I have exceeding great and precious promises. You're fed up? I, God said, come to me. My God, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. What is God saying? Come to me. What are you waiting for? Come on. But Lord, I, 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 I don't have the clothing. I don't, I, I'm not clean. I, I just wallowed in sin. Come on. Come, let's reason together. Though your sins be like scarlet, he said, I've washed them whiter than snow. What is God saying to you and I? Come. He says, I want you to be a part of me. And I want, my God, your spirit. My God. God says, I want to put place my spirit inside of you. Why? So that you can secure your position and that you can help others to know their position and to help them secure theirs. Amen. I hope I'm saying something here in the name of Jesus. So uh, again, we're talking about secure your position, secure your position in God. Look, don't let nobody tell you uh, anything different. Uh, stand up, my God, for God. If God called you to do something, stand up. My God, don't, I don't know why I'm telling you, but somebody needs to hear this. Don't be afraid. Everybody else, every other uh, person out here that uh, stands for anything, okay, whatever that, that they're standing for, <clears throat> they're letting the world know that this is who I am, okay? And I'm not afraid to tell the world who I am. But we as the people of God, we need to do the same thing. We need to be unafraid. We need to stand. Yes, I'm living for Christ. Yet I'm securing my position. Yes, I'm on my way to heaven. I, th this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My God, I haven't unpacked my bags. I'll be, and I haven't placed any pictures on the, man, uh, on the mantle because I'm just passing through. I'm just waiting for Christ to come back and get us up out of here. And people of God, let me uh, admonish you a bit tonight. He's on his way back. Uh, he's closer uh, today than he was on yesterday. And I know that we've heard that for quite some time, most of our adult life. We've heard that he's on his way back. But I want you to know tonight uh, you need to look around you. Jesus is on his way back. Uh, you're not isolated just to be isolated. Uh, Jesus, God has, has isolated you and I so that we can fix ourselves, that we can better ourselves, that we can sew up all the holes that are in our lives. My God, that we can wash the dirt off of us. My God, that we can change our mindset and change the direction in which we're going because he says, I'm coming back and I'm coming for a church without spot, wrinkle or blemish or any such thing. And there's only one way that you can see his face and please you got to have clean hands you've got to have a clean heart you've got to secure your position in him if in him if you want to see his face in peace and you and i people of god we need to stand on that and stop being afraid stop being talked down well you know that's old school well i don't care what school it is old, new, or whatever, I'm still going to stand on it and I'm going to preach it, I'm going to teach it until the Lord say the same. And that's how you and I have got to be. Everybody else is standing up for what they want to stand up. Democrat, Republican, Independent, hey my God, black, white, blue, green, gay or not, it don't matter. People are standing up for what they want to stand up for. And we the people of God, we better stand up. I'm securing my position. Position. I'm saved, my God, and I'm on my way to heaven, my God. I'm free from sin. I'm fighting every day. I'm living for Christ, and he's living in me, my God, and I'm unafraid, and I've got power over death, hell, and the grave, my God. Amen? Uh, somebody come with me on this journey. My God, if you don't want to go, I'm going. I'm going. It's high time for the people of God to wake up out of our sleep. My God, and call on this God. Oh, my God. That's what Peter is saying. Secure your position. My God. So his nature will become a part of us. We become a part of him. So we can escape the evil desires, escape the corrupt influences of this world. We want, I want to get out of here. My God, Lord, save us. My God, from this untoward generation. Amen. All right. Amen. I get excited. 
my God, about this Bible and about this God and what he's about to do, my God, for his people. Amen. Amen. So verse five of second Peter uh, chapter one, verse five says, and beside this, in other words, for this very reason, he said, giving all diligence. Now we're going to really get down into securing your position. He says, and besides this, uh, for this very reason, giving all diligence, my God, he says, giving all, in other words, giving all carefulness, uh, be meticulous. He said, add to your faith. In other words, add to your belief, uh, to your confidence, to your trust, add to your conviction. He said, add to your faith, virtue. What is virtue? Integrity, honesty, uprightness, and to virtue, uh, knowledge, wisdom. So he says, so besides all of what I just said, the exceeding great and precious promises and his divine power, the supernatural power of God, my God, and who he is, grace and peace being multiplied. He said, uh, beside this, for this very reason, giving all diligence, all carefulness, be meticulous, add to your faith, your belief, your confidence, your trust, conviction, add to your faith, virtue, uh, integrity, add to uh, integrity and honesty and uprightness and to virtue knowledge, my God, and that is wisdom. You've got to put these on for this very reason. Uh, what reason is that? Uh, that he's giving us great, uh, exceeding great and precious promises. In verse six, and to knowledge, to wisdom, he said temperance, which is restraint or a self-control and to self-control, to temperance, patience. Uh, what is patience? Tolerance and forbearance and uh, and to patience, uh, godliness, holiness and goodness. So he's saying to knowledge, temperance and to temperance, patience and to patience, godliness. And verse seven, to godliness, brotherly kindness. In other words, Christian affection, love uh, for others and to brotherly kind. He's saying add these things to you and to brotherly kindness, charity, uh, kindness, and uh, that's also another form of kindness and compassion and goodwill and love. He said, uh, and so, so in other words, going back up, he said these, and beside this, uh, uh, for this very reason, giving all carefulness, be meticulous, add to your faith, your belief and confidence and trust, uh, virtue, integrity and honesty, and to virtue, uh, knowledge, wisdom. And he said, and to knowledge, temperance, which is restraint and self-control, and to temperance, patience, uh, tolerance, forbearance, and to patience, uh, godliness, holiness, and goodness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. In other words, Christian affection, love uh, for others, for your fellow man and to brotherly kindness charity which is another form of kindness compassion goodwill and love and listen what he says in verse 8 now we're talking about securing your position he's saying for if these things uh, what things all of this uh, 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 careful the diligence and add to faith virtue and and knowledge and temperance and patience and uh, godliness and brotherly kindness and charity. He said, for if these things, all those things be in you uh, and abound. What does it mean to abound, to thrive, to flourish, to prosper, to be in abundance? He said, they make you that ye neither, that ye shall neither be barren. That means empty or without nor unfruitful or ineffective in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, what are you saying, Peter? For if these things be in you and they abound and they flourish and they prosper and if they're working in you, if you, you've you got them working and every single day you, you, you're churning them, you're, you're practicing them, you're working them out, my God, in the name of Jesus, they, they make, see, it's just like going to the gym. If you work out every day, every other day, you begin to build muscle. You begin, my God, to get stronger. <clears throat> 
each and every day because you you th- you begin to thrive you begin to be in abundance of muscle and and so he says well if these things be in you and abound you they're working you've been working with them uh, so trying to secure your position they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful uh, what are you saying peter if you work out if you do the due diligence, if you do the work, my God, and, and it abounds and it's flourishing because you don't give up and you are, my God, dedicated uh, to doing the work. He said, you shall neither be barren. That means empty. You're not going to be empty or without, uh, my God, and nor unfruitful. Neither will you be ineffective. Why? Because I'm working these things. I'm, I'm working them out. I'm working this brotherly kindness. I'm I'm working this patience and this temperance, my God, and this virtue and knowledge. I, I'm working these things and my God, and, and they're beginning to thrive. They're beginning to flourish. Why? Because I'm refining them. I'm getting better at it. I started out, I might have been a little shaky and I might have been a little rocky, but the more, my God, that I do the push-ups, I can probably only do two. But as I began to go through the weeks, I've worked my way up to 10 and 15 and 20 and 25. And that's what he's saying. If these things be in you and and they abound, they flourish, they prosper. He said, they make you that you shall neither be barren. You're not going to be empty. You're not going to be without. You're not going to be ineffective. You're going to secure, my God, your position. Amen. You're going to secure it. You're not going to be. Can you imagine if you just work on it? There's, you don't have to worry about the cup being uh, empty. You don't have to worry about being without. You don't have to worry about being ineffective with God because these things are working in your body. They're working. You get. You got them in your mind. You got them in the forefront. You've bound it about your neck that you might not sin against God. You've bound it about your neck that you might not forget my God, and that God will bring it to your remembrance as, because why? Because you're working out with it. You're working out with it. He said, you'll be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge, knowing the wisdom of our Lord, huh? Our Lord who we've committed. He's our Lord. So we've taken him on full time. He's taken us on full time, not partial of knowledge of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. But uh, verse nine says, uh, uh, but he that lacketh these things, all these things we're talking about, knowledge, virtue, temperance. If he that lacketh these things is blind. Now that's just blunt. But you know what blind is? You can't see nothing. And can, he even helped you and cannot see a far, you not only you're blind, you can't even see a far off. If, even if you said, well, man, I'm just partially blind, but yeah, but you can't see it far off. Okay. And you need to be able to see close up and far away. That's why I've got these glasses. So I can see close up and far away. So he said, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten my God that he was purged. In other words, he was removed, that it was cleared from his old sins. See, now, if you don't do that, verse nine tells you that you have not secured your position. Okay. And when you haven't uh, uh, secured your position, you lack. Okay. You're lacking those things that cause you to secure your position. And you know what? Peter said, you're blind. You can't even see it far off. You did it to yourself. Because God made it possible. He gave you all things pertaining to life and to godliness. And you didn't take advantage of the situation. He laid it right out. That's like being hungry and sitting down at a table full of food and not eating. That's not anybody's fault but yours. You didn't eat. You were hungry and the food was there for you to eat and you didn't partake of it. So Peter is saying, my God, he gave us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And you don't have it, you lack it. You're blind and you can't even see it far off. And furthermore, let me tell you, 
that you've forgotten that you were even purged from your old sin. You forgot that Jesus said, you forgot your first words. You forgot, my God, when you repented. You forgot, my God, when you came to God just as you were, my God. And he picked you up and he washed you in the blood of the lamb, my God. And he, he turned you around. He set your feet on solid ground. He set your face as a flint and your feet as hind feet. He began to bless you, my God, exponentially all over the place, here and there. You forgot it. Because you failed to secure your position. You fail, my God, to take on these things that Peter is saying. And, and so you've forgotten it and that you were even purged, that you were even saved at once. We don't want to. That's not a position you want to be in. You've completely lost your way. You've completely cannot see God any longer. You've completely lost your position. And I've come tonight to tell you to secure, fasten down your position, your place, your intellect of God, wherever you are, fasten it, fasten it down because the winds are beginning to blow. And when God starts to blow, when he sets the winds out and he sets the storm out, anything that's not fastened down, anything that's not secure is going to come up and it's going to fly away, never to be seen again. My God. So Peter goes on, verse 10, our last verse. Peter says, but so then, wherefore the rather? He said, but let me tell you something, brethren. Give diligence. In other words, uh, give careful and persistent work or effort. Give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. What are you saying? He's saying, uh, give careful and persistent work, give diligence to make your calling. What is your calling? Your vocation, your profession, your uh, mission or your work. He's saying, uh, be sure that your profession and your election, in other words, your selection or your nomination of the choosing, God chose you. He said, be sure, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. What is sure? Man, look, positive. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this, I'm, that I'm secure. Ah, I know that God chose me and I know that he called me and I know that he qualified me. So I'm sure, I, I have no doubt. Uh, nothing can shake me. You can't shake me off my spot because uh, I believe God. You can't shake me off my spot because he has given me everything pertaining to life and to godliness. And so I don't have to fear. I don't have to doubt. I don't have to lay down and I don't have to take the back seat. I'm riding in the front of the bus. Matter of fact, I'll drive the bus, my God, and, and own it too. Why? Because God has given me everything, my God, to life and to godliness. So he says, uh, wherefore the rather, and I like the way he said, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure, positive. Don't, don't hesitate, don't, don't, don't uh, waver, uh, be on solid ground. He said, for if ye do these things, my God, here it is, ye shall never fall. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, what? You mean to tell me, what things will I, do I have to do and I will never fall? Well, let's go back up. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, there's one. And add to virtue knowledge, two. To knowledge temperance, three. To temperance patience, four. And to patience, godliness, five. And to godliness, brotherly uh, kindness, six. And to brotherly kindness, seven. It's complete. For if these things be in you and abound, he said you're going to flourish. And then he says in, in 10, if you make your calling and election sure, and if you do these things, those seven things that Peter has just mentioned and that I just reminded you of, Ye shall never fall. That's a precious promise. People of God, that's securing your position in God. You want to secure your position so, my God, that if you do what God says do, what Peter just outlined to us, we will never fall. He says, so therefore, brothers, 
uh, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice, didn't I tell you that? Didn't I just say that a few minutes ago? If you practice these qualities, their qualities, you will never fall. Uh, the, and I want you to know this, that the man who has acquired these graces that uh, uh, has his path freed from many stumbling blocks when you do these seven things. And I want you to know, and your vision then is cleared to see and avoid anything else that comes your way. Why? Because you made your calling and your election sure. Okay. <clears throat> and you, you know that by doing these things, you'll never fall. If you practice these seven things, you'll never fall. Fall. If you practice these seven things, my God, you will secure your position in God and that everything, my God, that comes in your path, any sort of stumbling block won't be able to trip you up. And anything that uh, is coming from afar off, you'll have the vision, my God, and the sharpness of an eagle, my God, in other words, to see it and avoid it. So you will never fall. You'll never be barren. You'll never be unfruitful. Don't you want to go that way? Don't you want to be in a position that you've secured your position and not only secured it, that you're in a position that you'll never fall, that there is no stumbling block that will bring you down. There is nothing that's coming from afar. Nothing can catch you off guard. You know how it is. We're living in a day and a time. We're being inundated from all sides, from all every, you turn on your TV, wherever you go, you're, we're being inundated. And we have to be careful, my God, because we can get tricked tripped up and trapped up and caught up in things. We have to be careful with the civil unrest. My God, and uh, when people call us word, uh, different names, the N-word and all that kind of stuff and, and telling us to go back to Africa and all kinds of things are going on in this world. You have to be careful. You've got to be able to see that those things are far off, my God, and not stumble and fall. But there's only one way that you can do it. You've got to put on these seven things. You've got to make your calling and your election sure. And if you do that, he said, wherefore the rather, rather if you are diligently uh, uh, diligent about it, if you're persistent about it, if you practice those seven things, you'll never fall. You'll secure your position, people of God. So I want to leave with you tonight. I want to leave with you tonight. If you practice those seven things, here, here is your takeaway, okay? He says, and, and, if, and I'm going to read it to you again. This is your takeaway. This is what I want you to write down and take with you and use uh, during the course of each and every day of your life. If you give all diligence, if you're very careful, you add to your faith virtue. Faith is belief, confidence, trust, and conviction. Okay, virtue is integrity, honesty, and uprightness. And to virtue, knowledge. Knowledge is wisdom. Okay, this is how you secure your position. And you add to knowledge temperance, which is restraint. You have to restrain yourself. Self-control. And if you add to self-control, to temperance, patience. You have to be tolerant of things. You have to be forbearing of things, okay, and people. <laughs> right. And to patience, godliness, you've got to live holy. You've got to live a good life. You've got to be rich in goodness. Huh? It can be done. It can be done. It can be done. OK, you just have to practice it. You just have to pursue it. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, you have to love your brother. You have to pray for them that despitefully use you. You have to pray for the man that you know that hates you or the woman that hates you, okay, or the group that hates you. You've got to pray for them. You've got to love them. So to godliness, brotherly kindness, a Christian affection, love for others, and to brotherly kindness, charity, love, compassion, goodwill. So, and if you do these things, okay, listen, this is the takeaway. This is what you have to do. If you do those, if you add those together, you practice them day in and day out, Ask God to help you with these seven things, help you to see, help you to understand, to show you yourself, my God, and to help you. You have to pray. You have to fast. You have to meditate. My God, spend time with God. Take time out with God. 
Cut your TV time in half. Cut your sporting events time in half. My God, cut anything that you love to do. Cut it in half and give that ha one half of it to God and watch your life exponentially grow. Okay? <clears throat> and if you keep doing that, you'll thrive. You'll prosper. You'll be in abundance. You'll neither be barren. You'll neither be unfruitful. You won't be an ineffective and you'll reach. He said, but if you do it, he said, my God, if you do these things, ye shall never fall. I hope I've helped you tonight. I hope I've showed you the pathway, my God, to securing your position in God. It, it is important. It's of paramount importance. If we look at this again, take your time and go through and hear what thus saith the Lord. It's so important. Read uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 1 through 10. Take your time, dig in there, ask God for revelation, for illumination. Lord, I need you. I want to know how to do this because uh, you've given me all the tools. So why wouldn't I, if you've given me the tools, you know, I, then show me how to use them. You know, we all, you know, it's like I have tools here in my house, you know, in the garage, but I got to know how to use them, you know, uh, unless they're youth, useless, right? So God, show me, show me how to be forbearing, show me how to love, how to be compassion, show me how to be temperate, help me along life's way. I need your help. For without you, I'm nothing. For without him, we're like a ship without a sail. People of God, I hope I've said something tonight to encourage you. I hope I've said something tonight to push you, my God, closer to God, to push you, my God, to learn and to know and to, to want more of him, to have a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. God is good. God bless you. God keep you. My God, above all things, be thankful. My God, be blessed. My God, because this is a day and a time that we need God like never before. God bless you and keep you until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.